All right. Hello. I hope everyone's been doing well. Uh, we're very excited to get this started. Uh, we've got myself, um, Elliot here at Hooded Horse. Uh, we've also got Paul joining us over from Overhype. Uh, he is the creative director. And uh, we're very excited to be talking to you, Paul, uh, with all the questions that we've been gathering from the community. Uh, we've also got Antonio, who's uh, our moderator. Uh, he'll be keeping an eye on chat. Uh, so if you've got any questions that weren't asked or you're curious to know more about, uh, we will be keeping an eye on the chat um, there. So please feel free to ask anything that hasn't been answered or if you want to have any follow-ups. But first, Paul, how are you doing? How, how have you been? Like, What's been like since we've announced the trailer back in Gamescom? Um, how, yeah, <laughs> just how's it been? Okay. Uh, first of all, I'm fine, but... Uh... My brother Jan wanted to join as well today, but unfortunately he had to take care of some uh, family matters. He cannot join, but that's f fine for me. Um, no, yeah, we've been pretty busy. Um, there's a lot of things to do, and um, but it feels good that it finally the, the news got out, and we try to to pop into Discord every once in a while, maybe ask answer a few questions or something, and, uh, have a have a joke with the community, spill some beans. Yeah, <laughs> spill yeah, some beans. Fun, fun. But we, we, I, I really want to to get to the early access, but it's, uh, it's, it's tough. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. So that's great to hear. Um, just I, there's a lot of new people that have joined the Discord recently. I know most of them know what Menace is because they've seen the trailer. But do you mind giving us like a just a quick like synopsis or summary of what Menace is and what you guys are you know making? Yeah. Um, so Menace is a basically um, a game about turn-based uh, tactical combat, um, but the setting is set like in the, in the future, in the space setting. Um, so you are basically playing this um, cruiser of, uh, of Marines, like Republican Marines that end up in an in a enclosed uh, frontier system. And um, you get there to, to basically reestablish connections with this system, but while you are there and basically uh, on sheriff duty and um, mm -hmm. there's a new threat that arises with an unknown enemy and everything goes gets out of and um, yeah this is the basic setting like regarding the gameplay it's a uh, it's layered of course like with a space map layer with a uh, operation layer where you plan out your operations and then with the tactical combat layer which is like the most important part of the game mm -hmm. that's All basically right. it in a very small nutshell Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. So we'll start getting into the questions that we've been collecting. Um, we've been posting this on Twitter, Facebook, Discord, um, et cetera, et cetera. And we've been collecting these questions from you guys, the audience. So I do apologize in advance if I butcher anybody's username. I'm trying, going to try my best, but obviously uh, some people have very unique usernames, so can't always get it right. So uh, the first question we have is from Arrowhead. Um, he asked, they asked, sorry. Um, how will the overworld slash geoscape slash strategic layer be like in Menace? Uh, in broad terms, you know, what will the player be able to do it, do on it, and how? Okay, yeah, I will. I will try to answer yeah. that briefly because it's quite a big yeah. chunk of, of gameplay, <laughs> uh, like taking place on the space map. Um, just a little disclaimer for everything I'm going to say. Um, it's still subject to change mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we're still not even in early access. So mm -hmm. lots of things might change. Like uh, if I go back one year, uh, yeah, the game looks a lot different now than yeah. what we originally planned and this will mm -hmm. continue. And um, yeah, just as a disclaimer. So, but uh, the basic gameplay loop would be that you, um, you are on board this uh, Marine strike cruiser, then you will get distress calls or calls uh, for support from local factions. You will have to decide, like these will come in form of operations and you will have to decide what operation to take on. Then you go into the, into the operation, prepare your troops and everything, fight the operation, uh, which is a, a number of missions, consecutive missions. Then you go back to the, to the space map, collect your loot and stuff like that, get your rewards. And um, and so forth. Like on the on the space map itself, it's a little different uh, than Battle Brothers because it's not like an actual ship like flying around, and you have to wait and you have to run from space direwolves basically. 
but it's a little more abstract. So it's also turn-based, but um, each time you play, um, you play an operation, you take on an operation, you start it, you finish it, and then like one turn on the space map is mm. over basically. So, and with these turns, there are things that happen, like new operations will be generated. Um, the, the main enemy of the game will uh, take certain actions, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, events will trigger, for example, you will have to take care of your crew, um, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. And that's actually a perfect follow up for me. Yeah, that's uh, that's that was great. Um, just, I have a follow up actually from Jim Mios, um, who asked, um, so the will, will the overworld be alive essentially? Because you said by turn by turn that means like the other entity or enemy or neutral factions will mm-hmm. also like take action every time you do something. Is that is that the intention? Um, yes, it's. Uh, I would say it's like it's a bit divided between mm-hmm. your like the main enemy faction of the game and the friendly faction factions mm-hmm. because uh, with the friendly factions you will interact in the form of operations like or in requests they have for you uh, calls for assistance and maybe other um, unforeseeable events that you will stumble upon or operations that pop up on deserted planets stuff like mm-hmm. that distress calls um, this is what happens like from the one side of the on the space map and from the other side like from the enemy side um, the main enemy of the game will be a lot more active and you will have to react with, like each time a turn passes they will um, take actions and then you have to decide how to how to counter that and uh, what are you going to do for example it's just a very simple example um, would you rather like take on an operation to get some more gear for your troops or mm-hmm. like find a new tank or something or would you rather stop the advance of the enemy in a certain on a certain planet in a certain sector um, yeah so you will have to take the mm-hmm. so it sounds like there's going to be a bit of like immersion gameplay that will come um like as as you take certain decisions um it will then make uh, there will be kind of a like a domino effect of other stuff happening because of the decision you make is that correct absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. okay and, uh, of course um that this can also uh, lead to you losing the game of mm-hmm. course or making it harder <laughs> for you or making it easier for you or basically um yeah, yeah it, it writes a different story like each time mm-hmm. you play well it wouldn't it's be true fun. overhype uh style game if there wasn't a cause or like potential consequences with every decision you make so that's great yeah, to hear absolutely. yeah uh, and that was literal that asked that question about the emergent gameplay so thank you for that um Following up on that, I guess to answer, you kind of answered this already, but uh, Palindrome was asking, um, will there be any kind of like static, like marked missions, like where you can like, like every time you play, there'll be like some type of static missions that you can always tackle or will it always be like, like as mentioned, emergent and like kind of dynamic and changing every time you play? Um, there are a few of them, so like similar to the uh, to the new XCOM game, but mm-hmm. we, we try to keep them in check. Like it's not dominated by written mm-hmm. or scripted missions, but we have a few key points during the game where it's important to convey certain events. And um, uh, but those will be clearly marked, so you can mm-hmm. basically put them off on the side on the shelf for a while and then play them. So it's not they will not just pop up in your face and then okay. It advances to the next chapter so mm-hmm. but there will be a few of them but even those will be procedurally generated so mm-hmm. um i think it's going to be fun to play them like 10 times or 20 times no no matter what gotcha awesome um so shifting gears a little bit into more specific the gameplay um uh, is there been any plans yet on how like the game like the action to action is going to take in game like is it going to be like a turn-based system function or will it be like similar to what Battle Brothers was, would certain actions take action points or will uh, all actions take a fixed amount of AP, something like, you know, XCOM or games like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, like, I'll, I'll answer, like, two questions at the same time. Uh, the first one is the basically the initiative or the turn order, which is uh, alternate alternating, like in chess, for example, like you move a piece and the enemy moves a piece. Um, so, uh, but there is no initiative, so you have to actually decide what unit you want to move. Then the enemy decides what unit he wants to move until all units have been moved and then a new turn begins. 
So um, this actually uh, opens up a whole new new layer of strategy, and uh, already, like in the playtests, it's it's already um, it's already um, turning out to be a very vital part of your strategy. What what unit you move first, and then you move the unit, and you think, oh, shit, I should have moved the other <laughs> unit first. So yeah. it's, it's, I don't want to go into too much detail yeah. because the consequences are there are lots of consequences to this. But it's already like a big part of your strategy to to decide what mm -hmm. units to move first. But um, I think it's pretty interesting. It, it turned out pretty well. We were, had a lot of discussions about it, but it turned mm -hmm. out pretty well because it enables you to react right away to what the enemy is doing, and it's mm -hmm. it's a lot more dynamic. So it's not like okay, you move, you like focus fire all your units on a single enemy, and then you end your turn, you go get a coffee, and then you come back. <laughs> so yeah. um, it's more like you keep on playing and playing and playing, and you have mm -hmm. to to watch closely what the enemy is doing. It's I like it. It's it's fun. It's it's a bit. It takes a while to get used to at the beginning, but um, but it's fun. No, it and, sounds uh, very exciting. Part, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, the second part is the action points, which mm -hmm. uh, we decided for like a classic, a classical action point system, like in Battle Brothers, or the original um, XCOM UFO defense, um, because it's. <sighs> It's so limiting if you have only like a two point move system where you would just move and shoot or maybe shoot twice and that's it because uh, we have a lot of things that are that require actions that are not moving or shooting for example or the accessories like or taking a knee like deploying your weapons uh, using throwing grenades and different terrain for example where you are slower or faster or everything and so there's so our tanks like getting um, vehicles getting the engine damage so they get slowed down a little mm -hmm. armor reducing your your walking speed stuff like that and all of that is not really possible with with uh, with just a two-point move system so we need the granularity of, of the action point system so that we can uh, make for a more complex more complex gotcha um and actually that's a great follow-up uh from knife dog who asks um are injuries on character models like similar to Battle Brothers in the sense that like will characters like suffer specific injuries that deplete stats or like is damage assigned more by like the loss of unit members in in, in a squad or or squad death? Um, just because you were talking about yep. you know um, the uh, the action points. Yeah, mainly like the way it works at the moment um, is uh, that. It's more the squad members that are basically like the more squad members get get killed, like basic squad members, the less efficient your your squad mm -hmm. gets. So this is basically, um, uh, yeah, the squad leader cannot be just like the, the whole squad gets hit by a bullet and the squad leader gets in gets injured. That won't happen. Mm -hmm. Um. So and uh, if the whole squad gets depleted or if they all get shot down, there will be. Um. I think uh, there's another question later asking for that uh, as well. You will mm -hmm. have some time to stabilize the squad leader. The mm -hmm. Squad leader is always mm -hmm. the last person to go down. He will have a few turns to stabilize the squad leader, and um, then he will survive. Otherwise, he might die, like perma die permanently, mm -hmm. just like in, um, in uh, I think the uh, Wing Commander games, the the first yeah. Wing Commander, second Wing Commander games, also a big inspiration for us in yeah. that, that regard. Uh, Jack the Lions, they can also die, so yeah. um, <laughs> they, they can be stabilized or permanently di uh, die, mm -hmm. and uh, but. Regarding the injuries, it's actually like the system is pretty similar for vehicles, for example, because vehicles will uh, get damaged when they get hit. Uh, when the armor gets pierced, they of course, of course, they have different armor values on the front, on the side, on the back, and stuff like that. And if the, if the armor gets pierced, they might get an an injury, like a MM defect, call it. So, and these defects, like a damaged uh, turret, a damaged loader, damaged energy. Uh, system whatever um, and these damages are basically like injuries and battle brothers and they will stick with the vehicle for the whole operation mm -hmm. for, a, for a number of missions gotcha okay um cool uh so now shifting back to uh kind of the more of a the more granular like the larger um scale um what's the replayability going to be like for menace is it going to be kind of similar to what battle brothers uh, had offered or is it going to be more uh, similar to a game like XCOM, where you know there's there's more of a um, kind of a similar, I guess, storyline in in that sense? Mm. So on the surface, I think like on the first glance, it's more similar to XCOM because um, 
uh, the whole it's not like a, a generated world map where you uh, walk around and explore all the time but uh, the i think the reap and it has an actual end like the game has an actual ending compared to battle brothers but mm -hmm. the replayability will come from um from a different uh, source which is in my opinion a, a battle brothers is a bit lacking in that regard because um in uh, in menace we actually have a point system which is pretty similar to the warhammer tabletop franchise so like a battle has for example 2000 points and then you select your squads your equipment your armors your vehicles everything like from the pool that you have looted and um so it's it's a very big decision on your part what what to bring into battle and for example in battle brothers it's just okay you get everything <clears throat> you put everything in your bags that you can get and you put on the best armor and the best weapons and everything and the choice is not really yours you just use the best stuff you have and of course, you craft your company during a whole playthrough, but um, it's it's sometimes it's it's very hard to um, if you want to go for a certain playstyle, it's gonna gonna need a lot of time and a lot of commitment to actually mm -hmm. um, create a company that that works in that playstyle. And this will be a lot easier in Menace. And so I think it's a lot easier to actually express your <laughs> express yourself or to 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 create. Um, a, a crew or an army that reflects your play style and and okay this time i want to go for that style this time i want to go for that style i want to try out this i want to try out that and you actually have a lot more freedom of choice in in what you're going to to do and it's a lot less dependent on the random uh, character like the random um stuff that you get but you have a lot more agency in realizing like the play style you want to play mm -hmm. okay uh it's great to hear um I guess as a follow up to that, um, with with player agency, um, just um, I guess uh, Har Harouk twelve asked, um, will the alien slash unknown threat also and other factions also gain uh, like new units or weapons or vehicles or gear over time as the player also progresses through the game? Like, yeah. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a there's a, a difficulty system that it's a bit similar to Battle Brothers, where mm -hmm. it's a complex formula of like the mm -hmm. time you have been playing like the 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 strength of your overall mm -hmm. units the level of your units everything comes together and this determines basically like the 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 difficulty of the game and also like the the scope of the enemy's army composition basically like what units they have access to and on top of that there are certain milestones in the game where uh, the enemy threat will change and also will gain access to um special units and unlock new units over time so yes mm -hmm. okay um uh, huron asks does menace use a rectangular battle grid uh for the for for the engagements um you know versus obviously the hexagonal shape that um, battle brothers has and if so what's the reasoning behind that um yeah yeah exactly it's re rectangular and um of course, we also had a lot of talks about it, but in Battle Brothers, we already tried to uh, implement some uh, buildings and stuff like that, like straight lines, straight walls. It's always a bit dodgy with the with the hex space. Mm -hmm. It's okay, it, it works, but uh, we think that it works better with a with rectangular grid and um, also, um, um, yeah, regarding the like the modern setup, which is always very square <laughs> like buildings are mm -hmm. square and streets are tend to be square so there are so many square lines that we we thought that would be the better the better fit and uh, also like regarding the original XCOM UFO and like the new XCOM also work pretty well with the with the so I think there's another very important reason but I cannot remember it right now <laughs> <laughs> if it comes back up please let us know uh, but yeah. otherwise, yeah. you know, we'll just keep moving forward with the questions. So, uh, Big Papa G asks, uh, will there be different ways to finish a battle other than just, um, you know, killing everyone um, or or making them flee? Um, you know, could you make you know some kind of truce or do a rescue? Or is there is there any other like kind of types of mm -hmm. ways to um, engage? I guess per per engagement. Absolutely, yeah. This is also something that we definitely wanted to improve upon like compared to battle brothers because um we uh at the moment we have i think 10 different mission setups like, or like mission objectives and um this is from like destroying certain buildings uh killing certain enemy units uh, defeating a certain number of enemy units protecting certain assets 
capturing assets, recovering assets, like basically everything you can imagine. And um, there, in this regard, we also took like a lot of inspiration from uh, Warhammer 40k tabletop, where um, because uh, regarding the the mission setup zone, like the deployment zone is always different, like the size of the map is different depending on what type of mission you will be playing. So um, it, there's going to be a lot of different uh, mission setups, and you have to you have to choose your army depending on what your goal is. So you have to like basically blitz through the map to recover a certain object, then you have to take fast units. If you're just turtling up in the middle of the map and the enemy will come from all sides, you have to take different weapons, different uh, different units, maybe some explosives, mines to, to protect yourself. So there's a lot of different setups and a lot of different goals to, to win these maps. Almost never just kill everybody. Yeah. All right. Great to know. Uh, and speaking of missions, um, do we have a do you guys have like an, a, a ballpark of how many missions like an average playthrough will kind of go through yet or or still work in progress or it's uh that this pretty hard to say but in uh like the operations like it's so an operation maybe if some of the people here know better brothers the operation is basically a contract that's comparable but an operation mm -hmm. consists of a of a number of missions these the number would be three to five missions depending on um on the on the contract on the operation and of course, a longer operation is more difficult because your your losses will not be replenished between mm -hmm. missions, as, except for you take certain certain actions. But um, normally, you will uh, lose more and more and more people and assets from mission to mission. So a longer operation is diff mm -hmm. more difficult than shorter, but also yields greater rewards. Um, yeah, but uh, the overall uh, mission count, operation count, I don't know. It it also depends a lot on on you how many how many operations you play play through because there are certain points in the game where you can basically stall it and just play uh, not play forever but play for a longer time or you can mm -hmm. just rush through it so it's a bit up to you but the operations consist of three to five consecutive gotcha okay um and shifting gears now um to a little bit more of the customization part so uh todd god good weather um asks you know what can we expect in menace in terms of level of like customization uh it's um yeah so regarding the the squads like i think in better brothers you can already see that we are not big uh, fans of classes of uh, skill classes like this is a sniper this is an anti-tank guy so um basically the the squads you have or the squad leaders are completely free in the choice of the equipment it's not limited at all the only limitation is there's a difference between pilots and squad leaders. And pilots can pilot vehicles, and squad leaders basically um, uh, go, go into battle with the infantry squad. That's the only difference. And uh, regarding the, um, the, the equipment, um, we have uh, armor, which, is the, the, which determines the look of the squad. This is the, the armor. And it includes the helmet as well and the armor. So um, this is one slot. We have uh, squad weapons. And special weapons and accessories. So the number of accessories may vary wildly depending on mm -hmm. what armor you're wearing, what perks you're choosing, etc. And accessories are things like uh, hand grenades, uh, demolition packs, motion scanner, uh, binoculars, target designators, stuff like that, smoke grenades, camoufl additional camouflage. So as there's a ton of of, uh, of accessories, and they are very fine. Combat drugs, of course, all, all kinds of different uh, like battle stims. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, so there's a, there's a ton of like gear customization. Um, also with the vehicles, we have uh, like the basic concept of vehicles um, is that uh, you have we have certain types of vehicles, and they most of them have um, have a bunch of variants that you can unlock or find or loot or something. So um, if you have, a, for example, a mesh, it will have five different variants configurations with weapons uh, of which you can unlock or choose or find. The, once you unlock them, you can mm -hmm. just pick one of them. Of course, depending on the loadout, they will have different uh, point costs associated. And uh, vehicles also have accessory slots. So like, for example, smoke launchers, like uh, anti or like thermal imaging, stuff like that will all go into the accessory slots of vehicles. So they are also highly, highly customized. 
And gotcha. one more thing like that might be uh, what interests a few people is uh, like the visual customization, which is, as I mentioned before, um, like each vehicle and each vehicle variant will have its own look and each uh, squad will have the look be de will be determined by the armor it's wearing. And we still, especially Jan and I, <laughs> want to get uh, like skins into the game, like different uh, patterns of camouflage, different colors, but it's 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 not very high up on our priority list at the moment, so I can't promise anything, but it would be pretty cool if you basically could choose like the color of your armor and or the, mm -hmm. the pattern of your of your camouflage stuff like that. would be awesome. Gotcha. I can't tell yet. Yep, perfect. Totally understand. So uh we'll we'll see what happens uh throughout development. But uh thanks thanks for getting into depth into that. So uh, uh, switching up a little bit, you mentioned about the squad leaders uh, previously. Uh, Palindrome also um, asked, um, um, you know, will squad leaders all be completely pre-made, or will there be like significant randomization in their stats and abilities? Like, will abilities be entirely linked to like equipment or specific squad leaders? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the squad leaders are actually uh, predetermined, just in just like in Jack Alliance, but um, it's uh, random which squad leaders you will encounter, or which you can, can hire, basically, um, which is different in each playthrough. And uh, of course, at the beginning of the, of the game, you can choose from a, from a set of squad leaders. So each time you start, you will have a different set of squad leaders. And um, they are, they are pre-written because well, of course, they are written by Casey, or the Better Brothers writer. So he has some pretty fun, fun characters, some pretty interesting characters in store for us, and events and interactions between them. And uh, the squad leaders themselves, mm -hmm. each each one of them has a unique uh, perk tree. So they may share some perks. Some perks will be uh, distributed to, to a bunch of squad leaders, but uh, no perk tree will ever be the same. And they will also have some unique perks as well and um, uh, regarding the perks it's also worth mentioning that we again don't want to pigeonhole um, people into building a, a squad leader in a certain way like oh this is the sniper guy okay yeah he can only snipe no but we want each squad leader to be uh, viable in a bunch of roles so um, it's pretty um, it's pretty free how you how you level them up how you select your perks for the squad leaders yeah but they are written and of course we will add more over time but mm -hmm. I personally think there's I, uh, like reading the Discord. There has been a lot of discussion about this. Like, oh, I want my, I want my randomly generated bros, and it, it's absolutely yeah. awesome. I totally agree. That's big fun and better brothers to just hire random, gen randomly generated guys, and like one turns out to uh, to be a hero, and the next guy just dies on the next mission. But it's a bit after a while. I think it's a bit. Um, like if you if you have the hundredth melon maga or something <laughs> for the for the hundredth time, mm -hmm. uh, it gets stale after a while. And of course they interact regarding on their backgrounds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but it's no real like there's no character development, there's no actual background for anybody, there's no dialogue, no special dialogue that anybody can have. So there's an infinite number of characters, but they are all very shallow, and um, it it has its own uh, um, uh, gains. Like the system has its its merits. It's very fun. It's awesome, but we wanted to go for something else, and um, uh, we wanted to to get more into character interaction and, uh, and actual character writing. And um, I think, yeah, we will see how it turns out. All right. And will will there be any opportunity for like players to create their own squad leaders, um, or to like um, do any kind of player generated squad leaders? Yeah, we toyed with the idea in the beginning, but uh, we eventually ditched it because we then went for the classical route of the player being like the the major or the commander of the of the whole outfit and not like running around on the battlefield. Because, like the very first um, association, it's very easy because it already creates a lot of um, implications. Because if you create like a squad that is you, then you have to take a lot of effort in game design to not make that squad die mm -hmm. and not babysit it all the time and uh, it gets tiring <laughs> pretty fast so we decided against it and um, also we wanted all characters to have like proper interactions proper uh, relations uh, like an actual proper character like emotions like a temper 
a way of talking and uh, and lots of events between the characters. So if one of those characters would just be mute and never say anything, it would be with. But um, no. <laughs> gotcha. Um, and those were asked by Captain Phillips and Hack Rafoon. So thank you for those. Um, speaking of which, um, question now is shifting a little bit into the difficulty side, which obviously Battle Brothers is uh, very notorious for. Um, does the difficulty scale uh, in game? I think you mentioned a little bit how the factions will grow and as more time goes. But uh, will it be also similar to that, you know, certain missions you can see that, like, there's a designated difficulty by either difficulty rating or, like, threat level or something like that? And, you know, that question comes from uh, Jam Synth. Um, yeah, regarding the difficulty, it's um, the thing is that the difficulty, as I mentioned before, is, a, is a, like a mix of all, the, all kinds of different factors. And then, of course, also a difficulty setting at the beginning of the game. But, um, the operations are procedurally, procedurally generated, and then within the operations don't have a difficulty level in itself, like the start, like the schools and better brothers. But when you get into the operation planning, you see like the tree of missions, and the missions themselves they have a difficulty rating. So within an operation, mm -hmm. you can choose to go for the for the easier mission, which will yield less rewards, of course, but you maybe have to conserve your, your resources and you go for the easy missions or you go for the hard missions because you're confident mm -hmm. that you can um, you can stomp them. And uh, depending on the like the, the diff more difficult missions within the operation, always gr yield greater rewards, of course, and it always um, it also impacts your operation rating. So at the end of an operation, if you are successful, you will get a rating depending on your losses. The the time the number of turns you took um, your overall performance lots of factors and also the difficulty of the missions you played so you will get more rewards after an operation if you played the mm -hmm. more difficult um, missions. All right, um, and yeah, so now uh, shifting gears again to more specifically around the units and like kind of the vehicles. Um, uh, we had a few questions from um, you know uh, Blue Blue and the Rat King about you know. Uh, how are mechs compared to the tanks? Like, will they be like superior to the tanks? Are they side grade with different, you know, advantages, disadvantages? Are they modular? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, regarding mechs, is uh, like at the, initially we had a, a, a lot of discussions if we want to have it because it says a lot about the the setting that we are playing. Because if it's mechs, it's obviously fantasy science fiction, and if there are no mechs, it's more realistic science fiction, but mechs are just plain awesome. <laughs> as long <laughs> as they look kind of realistic, or um, I think it's totally fine. And they, um, yeah, they're just cool, just badass. Uh, we're big fans of, of the Warhammer 40k tabletop, for example, like the Cybots, it's just a classic. You got to have that. And uh, as you can see in the trailer, like the mech kicking around the infantry is also awesome. So they are in. And um, Realistically speaking, uh, there was a discussion in the Discord a few uh, some time ago about mechs being realistic or unrealistic, and of course, uh, there is no real reason in reality to to justify the existence of mechs. I think, in my opinion, mm -hmm. it's not realistic at all. But uh, because they're so much fun, we 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 will have them in the in the game nevertheless, and we wanted to to actually have them play differently than vehicles, which is very important i just don't i don't want it to be just a vehicle which looks different then we can just skip the whole thing so um the thing is that vehicles uh, need action points to turn so this is the the basic premise of, of the difference between the two um mm -hmm. vehicles need uh, need action points to turn so when they're going through narrow streets and they have to do a lot of turns um they will lose a lot of action points whereas mechs for example they walk they walk or they move just like infantry. They can mm -hmm. turn as many times as they want and just walk around. Mm -hmm. But on a on a straight in a straight line, they will never walk as fast as a as a like a wheeled or tracked mm -hmm. vehicle can drive. So, um, so this is the basic dif difference in 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 mobility. And also, the mesh can go through like boulder fields, hard, uh, difficult terrain where other mm -hmm. other vehicles get stuck. Of course, totally understand. All right. And 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 the modularity is yeah. that we decided. Uh, last week, I think even last week, we had big discussions about it. Or 
uh, ongoing, but uh, how exactly um, vehicles work with the modularity and everything. And, and again, this might change in the future, but at the moment we are going for the variants of vehicles so that you, um, you have a mesh, but you do not have you do not loot like a laser cannon and a rocket launcher and then you put a laser cannon and a rocket launcher on the mesh because the downside of this is if you play the game and the loot is random and you don't find a mesh but you find like 10 laser mesh laser cannons 10 rocket launchers 10 mesh power fists or whatever or, or rocket and then it's very frustrating so um you, you have a doomed uh, run you, 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 you might as well restart yeah. the run at that point exactly. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're just piling on and yeah. all the weapons for all the vehicles are just piling on in a stash and you have to get lucky to find a yeah. vehicle that you right. can actually put it on so it's a bit it's very unflexible it can get very annoying and um in the way of the game basically so we rather approach it for now with variants of the vehicles that you unlock that had different loadouts of weapons, different weapon combinations, and um, you choose that. Gotcha. Um, and is there going to be any airborne units in the game that you can control or pilot? Um, yeah, it's a mix. Like, again, quoting like Warhammer 40k tabletop, there are hovering units, yeah. uh, which we also want to have, but it's not, it's not in yet, but... Um, uh, there's a pretty clear concept for it basically like units that ha they do not walk but they hover and maybe just like a tabletop they can fly up and then disappear from the battlefield and come down somewhere else but it's not they're not like moving in 10 height levels and go up and down and up and down mm -hmm. like in the original ufo or something um yeah more like hovering units that may like take a special action to, to fly to a different uh, spot on the battlefield um, apart from that, you will get um, inserted by a dropship in each in each uh, mission, or several dropships depending on your upgrades. Um, and uh, these will also be used to deliver like off-map abilities, like uh, gun runs, uh, dropping bombs, uh, even for medivac, for example, for stabilizing a squad leader that is like out in the open or something. You might get a medivac ability to to get a drop dropship swoop in, pick him up, so stuff like that. So, but they will partake um, indirectly in, in the combat. It's not like a unit you actually control and you have to, you have to manually like elevate it and go down mm -hmm. again and hover and fly and yeah, no, a bit out of scope. Gotcha. All right. Um, so looking at the trailer, this comes from Turek 27, um, with the units being in squads, um, are these types of squads, are they kind of like a fixed type of inventory where like, one squad is like a basic infantry squad with a squad leader. Um, is it an anti-tank infantry squad? Um, are they all kind of equipped similarly or can each squad member inside be customized? Mm. Yeah, this, um, yeah, I more or less answered this before. So mm -hmm. we are completely free in, in choosing the equipment of each squad. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, with their perk tree, they kind of lean into a certain mm -hmm. direction, more offensive or a little bit more um sneaky or a little bit more anti vehicles but um in general it's going to be very flexible so uh, of course the squad leaders have very different um backgrounds so there will you as you as, as you go into the system you take with you like a bunch of marine squad leaders but uh, as the system's cut off from from the outer world basically you cannot just hire a new marine squad mm -hmm. leader so you you have to do with get in the in the way back it's called the way back system and you will have to hire eventually hire like uh, or, uh, former pirates former mercenaries um renegades i don't know uh, what else like um people with all kinds of backgrounds and uh, this also reflects in their character and also in their perk tree and um, especially like in the action interactions with each other because there's going to be a lot of of conflict between them interesting interactions yeah gotcha all right. <laughs> um, so speaking of, of the customization with squads and all, um, both Warmu and Arrowhead are, uh, sorry, uh, Aramazon are asking, um, is there any plans to like add some personality or voice lines to any of the soldiers or captains? Like, or will it be kind of similar to like, uh, you know, more of the grunts and kind of the sound effects that we've expected from Battle Brothers? Um, yeah, actually, uh... Today we have the first uh, trial recording session with a with a pretty good studio that does voiceovers 
So uh, yeah, we already started okay. <laughs> um, a trial run of casting some voice actors for mm -hmm. the, um, not for all dialogues in the game, because then it gets very hard to add new squad leaders. And, and mm -hmm. it, uh, yeah, it's just out of scope for this game. But um, the in combat, people will react to things that happen, and they will react differently to whom it happens or who, who, who does a certain action. And um, so the, these are called the combat barks. So when when they comment on something like within combat, like even in your uh, when you're picking together, when you're putting together your army, the squad leaders you have will comment on your army composition and give you some tips. <laughs> And uh, mm -hmm. like these barks will be voiced by by voice actors, but uh, not like the whole like dialogue events where they really tell something about the backstory stuff like that. You have to read through an actual paragraph or something. This will not be voiced, but everything that happens uh, in combat and that's uh, like the short lines that they give you, uh, this will be. Gotcha. And the enemies uh, as well. They will also have yeah. voice lines. Awesome, wicked. Um, okay, uh, so. Arrowhead asks, um, will the player be able to get influence, um, sorry, will the player be able to influence their total amount of supply over the course of the playthrough? Like, um, is there a system that kind of limits like the amount of supply you can bring into battle or deploy? Um, and if so, mm -hmm. like, is the player able to like, you know, expand that or is it kind of just a fixed amount, um, per deployment? And I think you mentioned yeah. with points, yes, so um, I think you kind of answered that one, but exactly. just, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, but um, the thing is that uh, I mentioned before, like, for example, like a mission being a 2000 point mission and then the enemy has 2000 points and you have 2000 points, but mm -hmm. there are ways to skew that in your mm. favor. For example, um, like uh, an operation consists of three to five missions, but after each successful mission, you will, or like each successful mission will reward you with a strategic asset. So you're basically fighting over strategic assets on this planet. And each strategic asset will confer a bonus to you for the re remainder of the operation. For example, giving you more supply points. This would be gotcha. one of, of, of the possibilities or um, giving you like an off-map ability of artillery support or something like that. Um, the other way is through OCIs, which is a completely new system that we were um, a bit missing a bit in Battle Brothers, which is a permanent a, a pool of, uh, like a tool for permanent progression. Because here you can upgrade your your ship, your strike cruiser, with um, with a bunch of upgrades. There's I think ten slots for upgrades for three in three categories, and you can put like sensor arrays or additional dropship bay or um, like rockets that get shot down on the planet for for basically artillery support and stuff like that. Medical bays, repair bays for your vehicles, and each each upgrade like each OCI upgrade, operational capability improvement. Uh, each OCI upgrade can be um, select installed like, multiple times. So this makes it a, a whole lot more complex because you can decide on installing the same upgrade three or four times or just have it once. And um, yeah, there, w there will be upgrades that improve your, your increase your supply limit for mission. So, but this OCI um, system, like upgrading your strike cruiser permanently, mm -hmm. this is something that um, that it's going to be pretty awesome because it, it it will take a lot, it will define your playstyle a lot, and it will be very different from player to player. And uh, uh, it, it, it's it's pretty deep. It's pretty. Um, it has a lot of choices to be made. Awesome, and I, I think you you really touched on this. So like, um, just going to say it for the sake of posterity's sake. But Hammerstein asked, you know, one of the major motivations in Battle Brothers is the fact that you know you have individualistic and different brothers um, that have different background stories, stat roles, camp events. You you kind of really answer that, but just to put the hammer on the nail, as definitive as we can be, um, you know, Menace, is Menace going to deliver a similar experience? And, you know, with the squad leaders, the different OCIs, the different ways mm -hmm. to skew stuff, it, it sounds very much like a yes, but, you know, <laughs> let's, let's not yeah. me put the answer yeah, in your yeah. mouth, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, Battle Brothers had the big ad advantage of randomly generating characters, but mm -hmm. I think in Menace the advantage is that the characters are very flexible, like the way mm -hmm. you, you you select their perks, and this even gets multiplied by uh, the OCI system, where you get like passive upgrades for your your playstyle or like for your game. No, no, even active upgrades. 
but um, where you can like basically craft your play, like even um, double down on your play style or enforce your play style with the OCI upgrades. And then the the third uh, thing is like the 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 army selection where you put together your your army. So there are three three different systems where you actually are, um, are in the driver's seat and you take the choice like how you want to play it. So um, yeah, there's a lot of lots of flexibility, and uh, I'm really curious with with uh, what people will come up with because I'm regarding the OCI system. I'm 100% sure that people will break it. <laughs> they find an exploit like a <laughs> yeah. combination of of OCIs that will mm -hmm. completely break the game. They did it in Better Bros, and I think they 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 do it again. Um, but uh, yeah, really looking forward to that. We encourage this. We want people to find the unique combinations that are game break because yeah. that that gives us also exactly. entertainment to see how people can combine stuff to break things, right? So uh, we do Absolutely. highly encourage this, that. Uh, <laughs> extremely important for me personally is that we do not like offer like we come up with a riddle and then uh, we also think of the solution, but we come up with a situation and we give the player the tool like a toolbox and then they come up with a solution. Like it's not pre predetermined solutions by us but the player have to like they have a big toolbox and they have to come up with something like yeah like uh, de defeating goblins for example in battle brothers where at the beginning everybody was freaking out and then after a while everybody was no, not everybody but a lot of people said ah oh, they're easy you just have to do this and that so um yeah i'm really looking forward to to uh, being surprised by the ingenuity of the of the players mm -hmm. all right um and that was also um, th that question was coming from Let's Get Acid, so just wanted to acknowledge that because um, I do see you are you're, you are listening on the chat. So thank you for submitting those questions. Um, now this is going to be um, this is pulling back to just more of the broader sense for the game, but um, you know, just nerd asked, um, are you are is there plans for mod support um, similar to what Battle Brothers has? Is there any plans for that for Menace? <clears throat> So um, at the moment we are completely focusing on on the on the base game, but um, as it's in uh, like the whole game is created in Unity, so um, and Battle Brothers is an, uh, our own engine, so um, it will be a lot more a lot easier to mod right away, I think, because like Unity is very um, there's a lot uh, of resources, there's a lot of right? experience yeah. people have with Unity compared to uh, exactly. Um, yeah. Own engine. It's very versatile. <laughs> it's flexible. It, it runs on all kinds of systems, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it's uh, something that we want to support more. But uh, right now, it's not the not the main focus. The same, but similar is uh, not similar regarding uh, translations. There definitely be some translations this time, so um, we are already planning for that. So not only English. There will be a bunch of languages. And that's what we're also here to help support. Uh, that's what that's what we're here at Hooded Horse to help with localization efforts. So we're very excited to uh, bring this out to more people as much as we can. Um, question that was asked by Warmo as well was: Is Breakdown Epiphanies going to be back to do um, any of the soundtrack work? For um, no, it's uh, highly unlikely this time because it's. Um... Yeah, it, it it worked perfectly for Better Brothers, but um, right now a lot of time has passed, and um, yeah, it's not not that easy to keep up. I'm, they're not full time musicians like professionally, and um, we uh, have been looking for a new style for quite a while, which is very difficult. I think we found someone uh, now, but um, it's not a hundred percent. Like it's ninety percent only. We will. Uh, we're really looking forward to to um, to revealing like the actual music mm -hmm. for the game because it's mm -hmm. it's very difficult. It's like everybody thinks they know how it should sound like, but then actually mm -hmm. describing to an artist what we are looking for is extremely difficult. And um, yeah, it, it already took a lot of back and forth with with a lot of different artists. But um, yeah, we'll see. It's it's still a work in progress. Um, that's all I can say at the moment. Yep. Totally understand. Um, will the game be uh, Steam Deck enabled? Uh, Shama the Young asks. Uh, that's a very good question. Um, I I don't know why it shouldn't because 
we are all also going to like it's always PC first, of course, mm -hmm. and but we are also the Battle Brothers was ported to Switch, I think, two years after release or so, or three, uh, which will definitely happen faster this time. Um, we will port it to a bunch of platforms, but mm -hmm. I don't know why it shouldn't work on Steam Deck. So I guess yes. I have no idea about <laughs> uh, the technical aspects of game development, so I'm just yeah. Like, well, well yes. <laughs> I can answer like I can answer like we're on yeah. Hooded Horse side. We'll always explore and try to support. So um, obviously, our best interest is to make sure that the game is available as many platforms as possible that we're supporting. So um, we will obviously have that as part of our um, support to look into. I'm not going to give strong answers because it's still in early development. So I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to lock us in with any answers, but it's something that we at Hooded Horse do look into per title that we launch. So um, yeah, to go in line with you, but to support you, but without giving a strong definitive answer. <laughs> um, Hayes asked if Casey is back to doing writing on for Menace. I just saw in the pop question. Uh, Paul did answer that. Yes, Casey is back. Uh, writing some stuff for minutes. Absolutely, so. absolutely. We even doubled down <laughs> because uh, for Better Brothers, he was only working as a freelancer, and now mm -hmm. we hired, uh, actually hired him, and he moved to ah, Germany okay. and is sitting in the office with us. So uh, there's a lot of lot of uh, nice Casey writing coming at you, like a lot more even than in Better Brothers. Awesome. And it's a, and it's a completely new IP, which is. Uh, as just as a tip for all <laughs> fellow game developers out there, which is absolutely difficult to do, like uh, developing a new IP, and we also noticed like the difficulties in uh, and the difference in difficulty in the setting because in a medieval setting, um, so much stuff is already given because you know, okay, there's chainmail, there's long mm -hmm. swords, there's two-handed swords, whatever, yeah, mm -hmm. leather armor, okay, just paint the leather, leather armor. But if you're coming up up with a completely new setting and a futuristic setting, you start at basically start at zero, and you have to mm -hmm. discuss everything. Like, yep. yeah, okay, space pirates. Yeah, are there yep. space pirates? Is that a thing? Know. Is How that yeah? Is that a thing? What, weapons do they use? what yeah, color are laser beams? Like it, it does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are there laser beams? <laughs> oh, yeah, are there laser yeah, beams? Exactly open. right. Like, <laughs> yeah. and this ex also extends into the law, which uh, Casey had to to work hard on. <laughs> like we had yeah. we tried a different. A lot of different approaches and and he's done a lot of exploring and uh, we had a lot of discussions but it's it's going to be very interesting because it's new it's, it's all new yeah mm -hmm. awesome uh i just got a, now a couple of fun questions to ask before we wrap it up with a couple more of the more uh serious ones that we can do to end the call mm -hmm. um end the q a session so uh, first off is there going to be a legless mode in the options for players to toggle and play <laughs> Uh, not really, but I think <laughs> you can, if you are lucky, you can shoot off the legs of people. <laughs> there we go. Or something, it may happen. <laughs> We're using rag dolls, so I, yeah. I already saw a few heads flying, So, and I think yeah. legs flying is also a possibility. So it, yeah, kind of, I guess is the answer. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, and then will the linworms come back in some form or shape in Menace? Um, actually, no, but I think I read the question. I had a quick glance at the questions and I thought, okay, yeah, maybe we should do that because we have um, one of the enemy factions is called Alien Wildlife, mm -hmm. which is basically um, like giant bugs and uh, like or aliens yeah. or that. space lions or something. And it would also be a possibility to have a space like a worm, like a dune sandworm or something yeah. like that would be a possibility. So, yeah, why not? Maybe. Why not? Maybe. Yeah. Let's leave it at that. Maybe. But it's not a strong no. So anything's possible. No, no. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, the Rat King, Alex Raccoon, Bellic, and I'm sure a lot of folks are curious, is there going to be a type, is there going to be a beta or an alpha um, that people can either sign up mm -hmm. for or, or get involved? Um, how can the community help with the entire development process for Menace? <clears throat> Um, I think that gets more uh, concrete once we start with the developer blocks because um, the thing is we haven't started yet, uh, not because we don't have anything to say, but because we think the early access uh, release is still a bit too far off. And the thing is that once we started with the developer blocks, like on Fridays or like every other Friday or something, that we don't want to stop, like we don't want to run out mm -hmm. of gas before the early totally, access yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, so um, 
we could uh, we want to um, to start it and then go through with it until the launch and then even continue with it. And mm -hmm. uh, during this this time with the with the blocks, we will figure out how exactly we will uh, go about the first uh, the first alpha testings or whatever or test groups. But I cannot tell yet. All time right. All right. Yeah. It's, well, yeah. We all that is all. Just as impatient yeah. as you guys. <laughs> yeah. No, totally. I understand. I, I also understand. I'm also very eager on this side too. So <laughs> I'm very excited for the game and the project, obviously. So, uh, yeah. So that's the actual questions that we've collected throughout the past week. Um, you know, is there, um, is there anything else you'd like to say before we kind of wrap things up here? Um, and, and kind of call it for there. And then, um, as mentioned, we are going to be say we have this VOD recorded fingers crossed. There's been no issues or audio issues with it. So, um, I did yeah. test it before, but you know, I'm just any live setting, yeah. you just never know. So I will check it right away after this and let the chat know if it, if it made it through. Um, and then, like I said, we'll get it um, uploaded onto the overhype channels um, probably over the weekend yeah. sometime, if not by Monday uh, next week. Okay. Yeah. It just maybe one, one thing in general, which is uh, kind of connected to what I last said is that uh, it takes a lot more time than we would like it to take but this is our approach and because we uh, don't we are not like responsible to answer to to an investor uh, or a publisher who we owe money to mm -hmm. we can decide on the deadlines and we really want to to create like a good game or the best game that we can and uh, we already threw out a bunch of systems that we already implemented and we tried it out and it didn't work and um so uh it's not like we are sitting around and taking our time but it's yeah just the iteration the iteration of game design mm -hmm. is it's taking uh sometimes more time than we would like but um i'm 100 percent sure that most other people uh, most other games to, that come out today that uh, um that basically fail most of them fail because there wasn't enough time invested in the development and they're undercooked basically and we don't want, want to risk that and um so yeah it will it will take some time thanks for your patience but uh, eventually we'll get there yep the chat totally agrees with you and also here at hooded horse we're also the same page we want an amazing game and we'll be supporting you guys however you need to to make sure that happens so uh like i said we're very excited for this and yeah um that kind of concludes the the uh q a session um Obviously, you know, I, you know, maybe this is something that we can explore to do more so when we get closer to um, having something concrete to share. Um, definitely, it would be fun to um, to to talk with you and hopefully, and next time as well. Um, but yeah, we posted the link to the game on the chat. If you haven't wishlisted yet, please do so. Um, otherwise, you know, we're, like I said, we're very excited to um, see the development for the game, and uh, when we're ready, we'll be sharing more news. Uh, Paul, thank you so much for your time. Antonio, thank you also for setting this up. Um, yeah, that's that's all we've got here, so we can wrap it up here. Uh, we'll get the VOD shared on to the Overhype channels, and absolutely no problem. And yeah, until next time, uh, take care, and everyone have a great weekend.